The order of Sufism that your father founded and that you are in the lineage of has a practice called the universal worship. Can you describe that? Yes, it is a form of service it was founded by my father in which we read texts of the scriptures of the different world religions and try to show the similarities and also the differences. All in the same service? Uh, yes. Uh, well, at the end of, after reading the text, then the uh, priest or whatever, the person who is ordained to represent the universal worship, um, tries to show what we can learn from these different traditions, how, what similarity there is between them, and also what differences there are between them. Because, as I said, we're very wary of uh, the danger of syncretism. That would be syncretism that would be um, just seeing the similarities but not the differences, making a hot part of the different religions instead of honoring their differences. If we are to pick and choose or take pieces from each of the traditions and, and somehow put them all in the same platform, doesn't that devalue? I mean, aren't we supposed to take one and study it and go? Yes, there are two different points of view there. Um, um, I think there is a danger in our time. Uh, there's a danger in what we call fundamentalism, as you know. <clears throat> uh, there are some people who are happy with it, and it's okay. Um, but um, I think that we're living at a time when humanity is uh, welding itself into a whole, and um, the differences at different levels are being coordinated now. And so why not at the religious level? And I think it's best possible that this kind of way of looking at things would, um, would perhaps prevent some of the wars that are taking place, which are due to a lack of mutual understanding between religions. How do you know which one to choose? I mean, what is the underlying...? Actually, I organize congresses of religions in which we invite representatives of the different religions to come together and expose their different views. And there again, we have, of course, uh, dialogues and uh, we can see the very, very severe differences. For example, um, if, <clears throat> if, you, if you study the dogmas of the different religions, then the differences are enormous. For example, a Christian would say that um, God was, had a son and uh, that Christ was the son of God, whereas the Muslims would say, God can't have a son, and there you are right away. You say, you have got a conflict. So, um, <clears throat> is there any way of reconciling these two, you see? And of course there is. That's my question. Uh, of course, a very challenging subject <clears throat> and very controversial. Um, well, of course, my father's answer was, I think, right on uh, when he said, um, if you can recognize the features of your father or your mother, of course, in you, you can claim to be his or her son or daughter. Uh, and so Jesus was able to, uh, to recognize in himself features of what one ascribes to God, and therefore he could claim that. But then uh, Christ also said, be perfect as your father. And by saying that, he means that he is not the only one. Of course, he, uh, that, uh, he's advising people to try and recognize those qualities in themselves.